Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's. Today we are beginning a new sermon series called The Time in Between. Uh, in the timeline of human history, there are really two significant major points. Uh, the time when Christ came to win us our salvation. And then here, as, we, as the church year comes to a close, the Bible points us to the end of time when Christ will come again. And until then, in between these two points, and between these two mountains, Christ teaches us how to live. And today we're going to celebrate the festival of the Reformation. Uh, the Reformation emphasized the true church's reliance on God's word and its testimony in the face of persecution. Everything should be on either the screen or service folder here. We're at this point, uh, we're going to begin with please standing for the beginning of our service. So please stand. Hopefully. Hold on, I don't know if we're quite ready. Well, while he's going, I got a minute. I forgot to talk about anyways, the connect card. Um, if you don't mind filling out the connect card at some point um, during the service, you can put the connect card then in the, the offering plate. So you um, don't forget to do that. Don't forget to do that. All right. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. You declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word, protect and comfort them in all temptations, defend them against all their enemies, and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. may be seated. Our first reading comes from Daniel chapter 6. This also serves as the basis for our message this morning. Now, when Daniel learned <clears throat> that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room with the windows open toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought <clears throat> and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating, and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up 
and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you can serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lion, of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was, was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 61b. You can follow along um, with it in your um, bulletin or in the, also on the screens. Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. The Apostle Paul reminds us that God justifies those who have been given the gift of steadfast faith in Jesus Christ. Paul writes, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the, and the prophets testify. This righteousness 
is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works? No because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 to 23. Our trust in Jesus doesn't mean an absence of persecution, but faithfulness despite it. Here Jesus speaks. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you'll be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day. You may be seated.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I'll be honest, this was kind of a difficult past week. Um, the, the families who had kids at home because there was no school kind of understand my pain a little bit. It, it didn't help that m my kids and I and my family have been sick for the last month and a half and haven't really been sleeping for the last month and a half with everybody up always throughout the middle of the night. And basically caffeine has just been keeping this body of mine up. Now this was by no means the worst week of my life and it was not terrible compared to other people's experiences. But I found it interesting that the, the text from Daniel was in my mind a lot simply because, well, I'm preaching on it. So many of us know that Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den. So many of us know that, that God saves Daniel from the lion's den. So many of us know why he was saved from the lion's den. And that's important to know, too, because he continued to worship God and pray to God, even though the law was changed against him. And so, I figured this week... I try my hand at implementing David or Daniel's prayer. And I thought I knew what his prayers were all about. But in short, my, my prayers felt like a loss. I was looking for deliverance, but it wasn't there. And then I realized I was looking at Daniel all wrong. I was looking at Daniel and his prayer life in the same way that his enemies we're looking at him. Daniel, to put it lightly, was having a bit of a rough week. In the words of that kid's book, he was having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. It began actually with what we heard last week from our seminarian. Daniel and his fellow countrymen were practically kids when they were taken away they were given new names and new identities. They were taught the ways of Babylonian literature and government. Throughout this whole time, they remained faithful to God, even to the point where some of them would be later thrown into a fiery furnace. God continued to bless them, and yet they were outsiders. And as outsiders, people didn't like them. They didn't trust them. People grew jealous of them. People tried to cut them down. For Daniel, this very strenuous life got very real one day when he got thrown into a lion's den. But here was my mistake, just like Daniel's enemies. Daniel's enemies assumed that Daniel was pleading to his life or pleading to God for his life in prayer. And maybe he was to, to some degree. Um, it realistically wasn't beyond the realm of possibility to plead for his life a bit. But the reality is that Daniel said his prayer was not about deliverance, but about thanksgiving. Why would Daniel thank God when God practically put him in that mess? I mean, God could have chosen not to let him deal with this. <laughs> You'd think that, that Daniel would be praying or, or pleading with God, complaining to God about these new laws and these new enemies that were clearly out to get him. You would think that Daniel would be asking God for some, you know, divine lightning bolts that would come down and just smite his enemies. Why would Daniel be thanking God when he was about to be pounced on and ripped apart by lions? Why was Daniel able to remain steadfast through all this? It wasn't because Daniel was so great. It wasn't because he was so fantastic. But because God proved faithful to his promises again and again and again. To Daniel, he could see that with every difficulty, God was providing opportunity. 
In hindsight, Daniel could see the opportunities that God gave Daniel to witness God's glory, to share it with others, and, and to serve God right where he was. Now, you can imagine Daniel praying, it doesn't really matter what happens, Lord. You have always done what you've always done. You've always led and saved my people. To think that, that Daniel's name had been taken. No big deal. Daniel's identity was found in God and his plan. Daniel's body could be ripped apart by lions. His life could be taken. No big deal. His life is kept close in God. Even for Daniel, in this scary context, even when Daniel knew that statistically, his life was probably going to end being thrown into a lion's den, what comes out of his mouth in prayer is thanksgiving. Martin Luther spoke a lot about prayer. Both friends and enemies witnessed Martin Luther and, and how much he prayed. Supposedly, Martin Luther said that, that he always had so much to do every day that every morning he would begin with praying two to three hours in the morning. The question is, why? I think about an orange. When you squeeze an orange, what do you get out of it? Orange juice. You don't get apple juice. You don't get grape juice. You get orange juice. You can see what's in an orange by simply squeezing an orange, by smushing it, or even, you know, worst case, putting it on the ground, stepping on it, and crushing it. What happens when the world and pressures squeeze us? But well, we begin to see what's inside of us. Fear, despair, guilt, anxiety. Maybe we just simply have the assumption that we should have an easy life because we've been a Christian for 5, 10, or, or, or 50 years. When I'm squeezed and pressured, I see the sad reality of what's inside me. I may not be dealing with the, the physical lions like, like Daniel, but I've got my own lions. The Apostle Peter, interestingly, said this about Satan. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. God also spoke of sin to Cain before he killed Abel, way at the beginning of the world, he described sin almost like a lion. He said this to Cain, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. The truth is, if I had enemies like, like Daniel spying on me, it would not take them very long for, for them to see how unfaithful I am to my God. To, maybe you even get those glimpses when you hand someone your phone and they look at your phone and you kind of get that like little shudder and you think, man, I hope that they don't like page through things and find something on my phone that they sh shouldn't be looking at. That might be an indication of already what's in my heart. Or to think that when I am being squeezed by the pressures of this world like an orange or a lion bearing, down, a lion bearing down on me, I could just blame someone else. Daniel could have blamed the government and the, and the king for this whole persecution. He could have blamed God. I could have blamed the school this week for not having school. <laughs> I could have blamed my kids for being sick and gross. I could blame God for allowing difficulties in my life. So why pray to God? Why should I give thanks to God even when I know that I might not be delivered from those difficult moments? 
Martin Luther's last note, written on a scrap of paper like two days before he died, mentioned that, that no one can understand the writings of Virgil, this Roman poet, and, and understand Virgil's thoughts on shepherding unless they've been a farmer for at least five years. And no one can understand Cicero, a, a very prominent Roman statesman, unless you have served in the government or in some prominent government office for at least 40 years. Maybe to put it in today's terms. <clears throat> you can't criticize LeBron James. You can't criticize Aaron Rodgers unless you've played professional sports for at least 15 years. High school ball, college ball, doesn't cut it. 15 years in pro sports. <laughs> Luther continued saying that no one should, should suppose that they have even an inkling of an understanding of God and the Bible unless they have lived, breathed, preached, and taught in the church for over 100 years. I got 90 years to go, you guys. <laughs> and then Luther concluded, we are beggars. In other words, we always need more from God's word. It's funny, you may wonder, why do Lutherans talk about the Reformation so much? <laughs> why do we make this a thing? One is because it is a very real example of what Jesus said in our gospel reading. It's Daniel's account played out. Second, because the Reformation, like Daniel, pointed us back to God and pointed us back to God's word where we find our comfort. Because governments and church leaders can fail at their jobs. False teaching and pressure can come from the government from the world around us, even from within our own heart. Persecution can come from our own family, our own friends. But the truth that rang out at Reformation was that we are good with God because of Jesus. And the more that we are in God's word, the more we are brought to that spiritual sanity. There is no greater state of blessedness than to be reminded that we are in Christ. And in those moments of insanity, when I'm tempted to think otherwise, God does everything he can to point us back to gospel sanity. To think that, that Daniel, or that God spared Daniel from the lion's mouth. But God did not spare his own son for you and me. God crushed Jesus so that we would not be crushed by the guilt of and punishment of our sin or the trials of this world. We can stand firm with God against all of our lions, knowing that we are good with God because of Jesus. Daniel was able to re remain steadfast in that faith because God was faithful to his promises. And in these difficulties, God was giving Daniel so many opportunities. That's why he could pray in thanksgiving. It's good to stop and thank God first. Prayer and thanksgiving gives us opportunities to have a godly perspective, to see God's salvation that he has given to us, and to see the opportunities that God continues to give us. It does not downplay the seriousness of our situations or our difficulties. But I can thank God for those moments to see God's display of glory, even in, in my ordinary circumstances. Prayer with thanksgiving really helps me to see yet another opportunity to trust in God when it feels like I'm getting squeezed out like orange juice. Prayer with thanksgiving helps me to see that God has given me yet another opportunity to talk with God. After all, I talk with God a lot less when things are good. Prayer with thanksgiving also gives me the opportunity to pray for others. 
it gives me an eye for those that are maybe suffering worse than me. It also gives me an opportunity to to pray for them and to support them. Lastly, prayer with thanksgiving helps me to see the opportunities to serve God right where I am. In thanksgiving to God, Daniel could serve God right where he was as a government worker. I mean, think about it. Daniel had every opportunity to sabotage. He was taken away as a kid. He was in exile. He was being targeted because of his religion and his ethnicity. And yet, he gave thanks to God. I look back and I say, yeah, this was a pretty rough week. But look at the opportunities that God gave me to spend more time with my kids, to show fatherly love, to give a break to my wife, to to show to my church that I'm not just a pastor, but I have a life at home too, that I can live in forgiveness, that I can live to to serve my God with my life, with my job, with my money, with my schedule, because God has done everything for me. Whether you are working the, the long hours as a hospice nurse or just the long hours as a mom, whether you are an athlete or a mathlete, whether you are a student or a grandparent, you can serve God right where you are, giving glory to God even in the humdrum of the mundane and especially in the difficulty of the hardships. That perspective only comes from reading in God's word why we can be thankful. For those that are new to Christianity or maybe new to prayer or those that haven't done much of it, We see kind of a great example of of prayer and what to strive for. For those that are good at prayer, we also see that we can always strive to get better, especially to change our perspective to Thanksgiving and away from kind of the common selfish prayers. Working on prayer is something that we can always work on. It'd be great to to make a a spiritual routine in our schedule of praying at at key moments and key events and key times throughout the day like Daniel. Or I think about how on average the American, the average American touches their phone and looks at their phone almost 96 times per day. It's like once every 10 to 12 minutes. This might be something crazy. But if you prayed every time you touched your phone for two minutes you would not be far off from Luther's praying of three hours. But maybe let's just start small first. The point of Daniel's prayer life isn't to be strict about praying at certain times, but it's to to improve our, our quantity and our purpose. Yes, we can pray for deliverance, but ultimately we just give thanks to God even for our difficulties. We know that whatever may come in our lives, be it physical lions or those spiritual lions like like Satan or, or sin, or maybe it's just the pressures and difficulties of this life trying to squeeze us out like orange juice, we can stand firm in our faith, knowing that we are good with God because of Jesus. And for that, we give thanks to God. Amen. The peace of God which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Almighty and eternal God, when the set time had come, you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to take our place under the demands of the law and endure the just punishment for our sins. You raised him from death in glorious splendor, and for his sake you richly and daily forgive sins. When the set time had come, you poured out your spirit on your people and called them to proclaim the gospel to every creature, equipped and encouraged they carried the story of salvation to all the world. The 
When the set time had come, you raised up your servant, Martin Luther, to destroy the idols of the medieval age and to restore the pure teaching of the scriptures. You granted power and success to the proclamation of the gospel, and your holy church grew and prospered throughout the world. When the set time had come, you made our fathers bold to take their stand on the truth of your word. Guided by your spirit, they joined hands and hearts under a shared confession and with a determined resolve to work together in the ministry. You have blessed their sons and daughters and enabled us to preserve and proclaim the saving gospel of your son. Let this be a time to imitate the kind-hearted souls in our church who served the sick, helped the disabled, cared for the abandoned, and comforted the dying. Provide occasions to serve them and times to pray for them. This morning, we especially pray for Larry, the brother-in-law of Sue and Terry Krause, who underwent surgery last night for health complications. Please bless his recovery and assure him of your presence. And keep all your children in your powerful and gracious care. Let this be a time when we commit ourselves to the ministry of the gospel of your son. Let us find joy in our unity, zeal for our work, and if it is your will, success in our labor. And give us faith to take up again the trumpet none can silence or mistake. And grant us courage to proclaim once more for all the world to hear. The feast is ready. Come to the feast. Today, we especially have a few special prayers. Lord Jesus, you instituted the office of the public ministry and have given your people the privilege of extending calls to serve us throughout that ministry. Having asked for your help and guidance, our school had called Abby and Charlie Galecki to serve us. We ask that they prayerfully consider these calls, that you would guide them to a decision that is in the best interest of your kingdom. And Sovereign Lord, we bow, lo bow low before you after hearing about the main shootings. We present with your strong comfort among those, or be present with your strong comfort among those most directly affected by this. And in your mercy, make shattered lives whole again with your peace. Give us courage to face whatever the future holds, knowing that we are in your hands. And Almighty God, eternal fountain of all wisdom, it has pleased you to call to her heavenly home the soul of Becky Lindenberg, the campus principal at Christ and St. Peter Lutheran School. We thank you for having made Becky your child and for having given her the grace to devote her life and talents to the training and instruction of the young. Look with compassion on those bowed down by the death of your servant and sustain them with the comfort of your gospel. God of all compassion, you watch our ways. And out of terrible happenings, you weave wonders of goodness and grace. Surround those who have been shaken by tragedy with a vivid sense of your love and keep them strong in faith. Though they are lost in grief, may they find you and be comforted through Jesus Christ who is dead, but now lives and rules with you over all creation. And hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Let this time and all our times be used to give thanks for your grace in Christ and to pray to you for calling us into your mission to save. We continue with the offering.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should give thanks to you, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose perfect righteousness is given to us freely through faith in him. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. This true body and blood strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for our final hymn, God's Word is Our Great Heritage. You are invited to join in in singing in the harmony, um, which you can probably find more in the hymnal than on the screen. may be seated. Good morning once again. Glad you could join us for worship. A special thank you to everyone who helped out in one way or another with the fall festival and to everybody who came and, and supported us. Uh, so thank you. We especially want to thank the, the Karlovskis for the, the leading of it and, and the fellowship committee as well for helping with all the, the food and everything else. Um, I, I think the final results for the chili cook-off was that Mr. Levi Nagel won the, the chili cook-off. Yeah. So, I don't know if I voted for him, but... <laughs> <laughs> no. It was good, I guess. So thank you to everybody who, who helped out uh, and even kept us in your prayers. Uh, this weekend, it's just a, a fellowship weekend, so no Bible class this weekend, um, but you can continue to read the story. Even if you're not joining us in person, you can, t can continue to, to read. Uh, we'll be reading chapter 7 for this next time um, for the story. Um, even if you have never come to one of these things, um, by all means, just you can like, drop in. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity just to kind of learn more about the Bible and learn each other. Just kind of nice about the, the small group uh, sessions. Um, as I mentioned, uh, fellowship this weekend. So hopefully you can stick around after the service and enjoy some snacks and, and some fellowship. As I mentioned in the prayer, and I believe we mentioned it last weekend as well, uh, Cornerstone Lutheran Network made some um, calls uh, for, for this coming year. So we called Charlie Galecki for principal and Abby Galecki for fourth grade. So as they deliberate these calls, please keep them in your prayers. Um, and then also, uh, Grief Share, uh, surviving the holidays, is going to be coming up for those that have lost a loved one or, or may be looking for, um, or may not be looking forward to the holidays without them. 
Um, feel free to either come here on November 11th at 10.30 or November 15th at 6.30. Uh, there's a sign-up in the Welcome Center on the kiosk, and I believe there are flyers as well that you can take with you and put posts in your own fridge, or you can even share it with someone else or post it somewhere else um, if you want on some type of community bulletin board. Otherwise, I believe that's all of the announcements that we have. Um, God's blessings on the rest of your day. Uh, just remembering that, that we get to stand firm in our faith simply because we know that we're good with God because of Jesus. God's blessings on the rest of your day.